Okay, let's go over the last page of the mechanical commissioning clipboard, which is this one called labeling. It brings up all the kinds of labels that we want to have. So let's start with the first location array junction box. We're going to teleport to that location. These labels are real important. This is typically the way, probably one of the biggest reasons why systems fail inspection, because the labels aren't in place or the wrong labels are put in. So let's go over uh, these suggested uh, locations and specific uh, labels. Sometimes they're a little bit different for different jurisdictions, depending on specifically what they say, but this should cover what's required in most cases. So on the array junction box, you're going to have this label of uh, the warning photovoltaic power source. This label is used a lot. Uh, it's used on every box, every uh, conduit body, like an LB or an LL, and every piece of conduit. So we're going to see it a lot. We definitely want to have it on top of the array junction box. So we got one here. That's good. And the choices that we have in most of the cases are, is the label present or is the label missing? If I put in missing, it's wrong because it's there. If I put in uh, it's present, that's good. It's here in this case. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for is to see that. And always check the eye of all of these things. If I check on the eye, it explains the warning photovoltaic power source label is required in several locations every conduit body and 10 feet every 10 feet along the conduit so always check these eyes to know the information about that particular step let's go to the next one look at rooftop conduit let's see about going along there once again we're examining our conduit and here we have that label right here we have another one located right here and it turns out we got uh, another one further down uh, at the end of the array so that's good but in this case we got uh, our labels at least uh, within every 10 feet so we can make our choice here and say that that is indeed present good deal let's look at the roof penetration LB cover so we're going to teleport to that location and here at our roof penetration we have our LB and once again that same label that warning photovoltaic power source needs to be on every LB LL every conduit body and so we've got it on the cover so that's good so we can check that guy out and say it's present now let's go underneath let's go to the LL body under the roof If we teleport under the roof now we're uh, looking underneath and once again we're looking to see if those labels are present once again we're checking for that same kind of label so here's the uh, uh, body underneath the roof and we got the label in place that's a good job so we're going to be able to whoops we're going to be able to pull down the choice here and say indeed it is present at this point let's look along the wall conduit so if we teleport to that location here we're, we're seeing right here uh, that we've got let's zoom in a little bit there we can see that we've got our label on our conduit and you can also uh, examine the conduit a bit further looking around notice that we got the labels along it at least every 10 feet so we're doing a good job there so in that case we can check that off and say that they are present how about around the window conduit wherever the conduits going so let's teleport to that and here again we got some conduit going around it we got a label there it is in place it's on the conduit piece there the conduit piece coming down here and I got the label on the conduit body so I'm doing good in that case uh, so I can select that those indeed are present as well right now we're gonna make a change here we're gonna go to the inverter cover so let's take a look at the inverter cover Here's where we're starting to get into some more complex labels. We're away from the conduit. And in this case, uh, we got four that are required. It's real important to read the I or the information around the uh, each thing. So if I look under inverter cover and I bring it up, it explains, and I want you to read this each time, it explains the inverter uh, switch cover needs to have multiple labels because it's both the DC disconnect and also it's where the rapid shutdown functionality is located. So all the four labels that are needed are described in that more info note. I want you to read that. So we certainly have to have this label indicating that it's a photovoltaic disconnect. That's the DC disconnect. The DC switch is inside here. That's where the label's got to go. And also, we need per code to indicate uh, numbers about the DC uh, voltage and current. Uh, both these numbers come from the manufacturer. The maximum voltage from this particular um, uh, set of uh, optimizers from this particular manufacturer is 500 volts DC. And we've got two strings, each with a maximum current of 15. So we have 30 amps. So we have to actually write this in. So you'll notice that in the pull down for the inverted cover, one of the choices you have is not only is it present or is it missing, but are the values missing? So you might have some cases where the label might be put on, but the guys forgot to write down the numbers. 
and that would fail inspection. So in this case, we can say that we got those numbers in place. Then we also need the rapid shutdown switch for solar, solar PV system uh, because the rapid shutdown uh, mechanism is inside this body, and we need the specific kind of rapid shutdown. There's two labels. One is yellow like this, indicating that it reduces the shock hazard in the array, and another one is red, indicating that it reduces shock hazard up to the array. So we've got all four of our labels. Once again, click on the I to show. You can read it, and it explains to you all the labels that are needed, and all four are needed. So if uh, I pull this down, if all four weren't present, if I had like three or something, I'd say one is missing, or maybe the value is missing. But in this case, we got all of them present. So that's cool. I'm going to do that. Let's move on to the revenue grade meter cover. Go into there. Basically, that one just needs this label. And this one's used a lot as well. I'm going to zoom in a bit there. That's the warning shock hazard. That label is, again, one that's used in a lot of different places. Basically, because any electrical equipment between the inverter and the main service panel uh, is going to be able to have electricity from both sides. Uh, when you shut down the system, there's residual uh, voltage still at the inverter. It's got to bleed off. And if you immediately went inside and started touching around here, you might get power from where you didn't expect it. So this says terminals on the line and load side may be energized. That label is used a lot. That's what's required here. So if I look uh, here, I can pull it down and say, yep, that one's present. Good job. How about at the AC disconnect switch? Let's move on to that one. There again, you can zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I always like to have fun if I click on the cover. Whoops, brings up the cover. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, I like to see what's going on inside. But if I look at my labels, you can see that here as well, if I read the more info, click on the I, it tells you exactly what labels are supposed to be there. The AC disconnect needs a couple because it is the AC disconnect and also because it can be energized from both sides. So read that more info note and bring down the cover. And note that I have both the label that indicates it's an AC disconnect, and it has the utility required values. These are the AC values, so it's got a nominal operating voltage of 240, that's typical, and it's got rated output current of 21 amps. That comes from the inverter manufacturer. So those numbers, once again, have to be written in. You can't just put on the label and forget it. Plus, it also has to have the warning shock hazard label. So if I look over here under my choices, once again, I could say it's either missing or maybe I put it in place, but I left off some values. You may run into that in some of your scenarios that you're going to check out. But in this case, everything's present, so I get to choose that. Let's finish up at the main service panel. I teleport over there. I got three labels that I have to put in there. And if you read the I, again, it describes all three of those very well. And you have to say that it's the main photovoltaic system disconnect, because that's where the solar breaker is. You also have to have the warning shock hazard. And you also want to have a label saying, warning, turn off photovoltaic disconnect prior to working inside, just to be safe. So we've got, if I zoom in a little bit, we've got all three of those labels. The main system disconnect, because it's got the solar breaker. There's the, uh, the warning of shock hazard. That one has to be used every single time on every piece of equipment. And the warning, turn off photovoltaic disconnect prior to working inside the panel. Uh, you're going to want to turn off the solar breaker uh, before you work on your system. So we can indicate here that all of my labels happen to be present. Let's finish up by looking at the um, main service panel on the inside. So I'm going to teleport. I'm going to cover my touch my cover. I get to click on the cover, open up the cover, and lo and behold, there's my label that I need to have for my photovoltaic breaker. Uh, the PV breaker is way at the top. It's away from the main breaker, which is down here at the bottom. And you've always got to have a label that indicates which of your breakers is the solar breaker. So this one says PV solar breaker. It says do not relocate this overcurrent device. We don't want an electrician later to move that device closer to the main. So we always have to have that label in there as well. So I'm going to indicate, yep, okay, I got it present. And I'm going to finish up by closing up my cover. And that's how you do your final page of your mechanical uh, commissioning, checking on all your labels. Hey, thanks for watching the training video using Interplay's simulation-based training program. You can keep watching our solar videos by clicking on the link to your left or stay up to date on our latest solar snacks by subscribing on your right. To learn more about how the STP provides critical team training and helps you build an onboarding program at your company, please go to interplaylearning.com.